Good morning from the cleanest city in Africa, Kigali. I'm actually here to rest, but I'm meeting people and the testimonies that I'm hearing, I feel like I cannot rest, but share these testimonies with you all. I mean, I love this country and I've done a lot to put this country on the map, but I never knew that it's actually reflected in an impact of people moving to Kigali because of my videos. You moved to Rwanda or you came to visit? We move, brother. You know how inspiration that is. Yesterday, I got a message on Instagram. Someone told me that, hey, I came to Kigali to open a coffee shop because of you. And I'm an African American. And I feel like if that is the case, I'm living today, yeah? But I have to go meet her for her to tell me her story and what really inspired her to come to this country to do what she is doing. My name is Mr. Ghana, baby. If you are new to the channel, please do me a favor, subscribe and be part of this awesome family. Um, since there's breakfast, definitely, I'm definitely going to go in there and have breakfast. I've not eaten yet, but I'm going to have breakfast in there. So come with me. Let's have breakfast together. I am Maya. This is how the place looks like. It looks really beautiful in here and um, me I just want to go have breakfast but the place looks more classy already. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine. Welcome sir. Thank you. Yeah. It's um, oh, COVID protocols, yeah? yeah? Wash your hands. Let me put on my mask. Yeah, come on. Alright. See you. Thank you. I would love to sit inside. Not better. Ah. Hi, man. Hi. How are you doing? So, what's around? Tell I'm around, yeah. Oh, come, come, come. Yeah, you've been waiting for me. Waiting for you, but it's okay. Oh, you, I'm good. Sorry for being late. It's okay. I, 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 it's okay. I'm always late, you know. We really didn't have to sit down. We have to stand and have a conversation. But it, it's a pleasure meeting both of you. Oh, yeah, it's pleasure our pleasure. Pleasure. pleasure is ours, brother. You moved to Rwanda or you came to visit? We moved, brother. <laughs> We're here now. We're here. How long have you been here? Not very long. Six months. Six months. Six months in Rwanda. Yes. You already have uh, yeah. Coffee shop that everyone is talking about. Yay! That's the that's the beauty of Rwanda. That's the beauty of the continent. But guess what piqued our interest? What? A little Ghana boy sitting in the gutter <laughs> in Rwanda, <laughs> saying, "I am here eating food in the cleanest country in, in Africa." Cleanest I was country. like, "What? What?" Because I already was following you for the for Ghana because yeah. we were looking into Ghana. Mm -hmm. When you said that, I was like, Shh, Abba, "Look, look what he said." We looked, yep. we saw, we like, hmm. And that started our research. And that's what brought you to Rwanda. You know, let's have a seat. And yes. um, I want to ask so many questions because okay. I, I feel like I need to know more about you and what you're doing here at this very moment. And I believe your story can inspire so many, yes. I mean, Africans in the diaspora who also come back home and be part of the chain that we're looking for. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. You did a video mm -hmm. right at the moment where my why was coming through for you me. Have to share it on the video. No, because I don't want to be making the ugly face cry on the video. I just yeah. want to tell you. <laughs> and it was when um, the last police killing. True. Sure. Sure. And you were crying, and you did a video. A video. And you said, "Why are you there?" And I was like, and I showed him. I said, even he said, "Why are you there?" And that right there was the energy that was like, "Let's get out of here." For me, it might be different for him. But as I'm watching you, I was like, yeah, I remember. That's the why. And, and that's what we talk about for us, why we came and why we're here and what our mission is here. So I wanted to say it right now so I don't be, because people keep getting me crying. It, 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 it's fine that we started the video this way. Like I said, it's just a conversation. Sure. Um, let me know, yeah? Now, you came in here. Right. How are the people embracing you? Oh my gosh. It's, you can't even put words on it. It's from the moment we came and arrived, it was nothing but open arms. And the word, just a small word that meant so much, welcome. Welcome home. 
welcome home. And that, mm, that went real deep for both of us because we knew that our connection is here on the continent, but because we are so spread out, we don't know exactly where. But to come here to Rhonda, in those words, welcome home, it, it, you can't put words on it. Mm -hmm. You really can't put words on how that makes you feel. Mm -hmm. And not only just the words, but as you can see, just in a short period of time, by the grace of God, and the structure and the infrastructure of the country, we've been, at, we've been able to establish this, which would have been unheard of in the States. We tried in the States. We tried. My dream is always to have a restaurant. He wanted a coffee. He wanted a coffee and bookstore. Mm. And we would drive around Atlanta. We're from Atlanta, mm. trying to get a, a building. Didn't qualify. The odds are stock, stacked against you. In the states, you have to have massive capital. You have to have excellent credit. Mm. You have to have the referrals, the connections, if you want to do something like this there. And we tried. We've had. We've laid the groundwork. We did the work. So we were come here after watching the videos of you, other YouTubers, talking about Rhonda, the ease of business, how safe it is. I'm like, and, and they killed us. They kept killing us over and over and over again, right even in our own city. Mm. And I was like, it's time. COVID shut us down. We couldn't do any work. And we were like, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And um, establishing this, was it that easy? It was so easy. It, it was very uh, scarily easy. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> it was scary easy. Yeah. Like they, they were like, they didn't, even the, the owner of the building was so happy because Rhonda needed this. It's not just a restaurant or a bookstore. Hmm. This is a melting pot. We wanted to be able to have a place where the diaspora could come hmm. and integrate with the Rondi's people. With the Rondi's. Yeah, so it, it's not like we're here and they're there. Mm. This is a family unit here. Family. So everyone that comes in is either expats or Rondin people. And we introduce each other to them like, listen, you need to meet him. We'll find out exactly. uh, a Rondi's has a background in this. Wow. We introduce them to this expat because they're trying to do the same Absolutely. thing. And we're connecting people. That's and so Yes, so the mission is bigger than just having that building. That was wow. our foundation. But now we see that God wants us here for an even bigger purpose. We're showing people that there's options out there. There's opportunity mm. here. Opportunity here. Yeah. Yeah. What are yes. the kind of opportunities that you've seen since you got in here? Oh, um, This wow. is our second business. Right. We also have an Airbnb here. In, in Rome. Yes, that's our first business. Um, so which means that whenever you're coming to Rwanda, See, I'm just gonna tell you. I'm, you know that I don't bet, yeah? I say that it's by force because I'm telling you guys that it's time for us to change that narrative that Africans don't support Africans. They have Airbnb in here. Whenever you come, it's rather unfortunate that I didn't know. I'd have stayed in your Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> I would've locked so, it down for you. <laughs> whenever you come in here, I'm gonna put the details, yeah? But also, when you come, please come and grab a coffee in here and tell them that oh because of what am I that's why I'm here. I, I would love to hear those Your people. coffee would be free if you say what am I here. Just the coffee. Just the coffee. Have a line outside the door. We're looking for free coffee. Free coffee. Come on, come on. <laughs> There's gonna be a long queue. Exactly. Hey, we want you to come. <laughs> yeah but you, you've been in Rwanda if you should tell people like who have no idea about Rwanda, um, what, what would be your definition? I mean, how will you describe Rwanda? Uh, love. I would say it's a is the, the people, uh, which you know is a reflection of the leadership. Mm. That's very important. The investment the leadership has in the its constituents, the people, is reflected in the people. Going back to the welcoming, mm. it's, we didn't know it then, but the, we saw that the reflection is the investment the leadership has in them. And, and not just in them directly, but in understanding that there are those of us who are here from across the diaspora. 
and those of us who, and those that know that we have an experience where we come from, and there's an empathy that is put, that is put forth that he's wanting them to have for us that allows for them to say, welcome home. So the root of all of that for me is love, is love. So that's the experience, you know, for myself, if I could put it in a word, that would be it. And, and for me, uh, a sister told us when we came, we visit for a week, just to really to pick out our house and see, make sure it was everything that y'all were saying it was. But a sister said when we were here, this was the day before she leaves, she was talking about the leadership. And he had told the Rwandan people, when the expats come, welcome them. Black Americans. Black Americans come, <laughs> welcome them. Because, yeah, right. Because they've been through what we've been through. Yeah. That touched my soul. Because people don't understand. We're really been through some trauma in the States. And still is. We're a stolen people. And a lot of Africans don't even know that we're a stolen people. They just think we're another group of black people in the U.S. No, we're a stolen people. We don't even know where we come from. We all believe we come from Ghana, from the West Coast. We all, that we're over there because that's where the ports were. But for us, it don't really matter what part of the continent we're from. We're one people. We're one. And we want to be here on the continent and to feel that people want us here. The Rondis come in, they were like, we need this. We love this. They don't know about our experiences. So we have the bookstores. We have the books. We, we want to bring the black American experience, but we still have books from other African authors as well. So it's a merger, it's a fusion, even our food. You're going to have food being made for you. I want you to try. But it's an a American fusion. Yeah. Yes, so we have American, uh, we have really a dealer's stamp on American food, mm -hmm. and then we have the Rwandan food, and it's a true merger. Merger? Merger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too excited. Yeah. But it's a fusion of foods, our music, our artwork. You see, we have the Rwandan art, but then you also have the Black American art as well. Yeah. So everything is trying to bring the two together so it's a family unit. There's no, you're not more important than we are. We're just trying to cohabitate and bring the love and we need it. We're trauma, traumatized people. We don't even realize how messed up a lot of us are until you come to a place that has love and peace every day. And you're like, wow, we don't even trust it. Like, um, there's a- No, baby, that goes to the driver. Oh. I, 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 see, you know, Somebody might be watching this video and be like, oh, Maya, whatever they're talking about is all rosy, yeah? Mm. I mean, I want to know, when you go here, definitely you face two or three challenges as an African-American trying to fit in in the society, yeah? Mm -hmm. What kind of challenges did you face mm -hmm. when you, you came in here that you feel like, you feel like people need to know before yeah. that move? Sure, sure. Cultural sure. challenges. Right. We come from a place where we, they worked us to death. So our ethic is work, 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 fast, 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 don't be late, let's get it, let's move it. Um, I think we're probably more aggressive than the laid back Rwandan people. So they look at us sometimes like, okay, relax. <laughs> Especially me, he's more laid back. I'm more Rwandan. <laughs> we, we say that like he's Rwandan. But for me, I gotta get it. And that's the mindset that I'm trying to not necessarily come away from, but slow it down a little yeah. bit. And so even dealing with um, our team, yeah. it's a lot of colonialism that still you see traces of. So our team want to call us boss. We, we don't like that. that. cut that out. Yeah, because in, uh, in the States, boss is a slave term. Mm. All right, boss. That's, that's They whip that into us. Mm. So we're like, no, we're not your boss. No. Um, we're, we, we work together, we're a family unit. We right. don't have, another guy came in here last week and he said, well, maybe your servants can go do blah, blah, blah. So, and I was whoa, like, whoa. We don't have servants. No, they, they, these are trigger words right. for someone coming from the States. We have no servants. Uh, one of our employees um, or teammates, he was surprised that we asked him, how, how are you feeling? We were talking to him, what's going on? And he almost was in tears because he said, who am I? that you ask how I'm feeling and you're our bosses. And I'm like, what? 
You're a man. You're a man. And I see you, and I see you in pain. Right. You're a grown man. man. That's how we see you. Absolutely. You're not no servant. Yes, we, you work for us, but we're a team here. We need you as much as you need us. Exactly. So we don't ever want anyone that we work with to think that we're your boss, you're our servants, you're beneath us. No, that's not. And so that's weird for them because they want to call us that. Our team call us Jada and Abu. Wow. Is it safe in Rwanda? It's, it's, it's very safe. And if I may, it, it, with that, you know, uh, as you may know and, and your audience may know that um, the measures that were put during, for, during this whole pandemic here in Rwanda, uh, we came at a time where it was, uh, you know, fairly strict. You know, curfew time was like, you know, very like you had a small window of time to do your thing. And you had to be back in the house. So things have gotten better and the restrictions have lifted uh, a bit to the curfew is extended, you know, where you can really kind of like, you know, be free. So the very first I remember this, the first uh, when they first lifted it to where it extended into the night hours, I uh, walked to the store when I left my home and I walked out of the gate, I saw a group of young brothers, young black men. And I had to really pause in my mind and remember that I'm in Africa, I'm in Rwanda. <laughs> because had I been in the States, that would have been an alarm because I don't know. They might try they something. They might have tried something. And so I was immediately put at ease and I walked by them. They waved, I waved, <laughs> and I kept on going. And then as I went further up the street, I saw a female walking. She didn't clutch. She didn't look at me as if he may do something. She just kept on going. And I kept walking a little further. And as I was walking, I was coming upon another female from behind. She didn't look behind her yeah. thinking she just, and I said, wow, man. It's, it's, it was just, it brought me to tears because, so the safety factor is, again. It's real. It's real. <laughs> it's yeah. real. It's real. And I can be me, man. Yeah. I can be me. And I can feel be. feel free. And feel free. Not having the forethought that because I'm black that I may do something to you. Yeah. Or harm yeah. you. It's, or feel harm. Yeah. Or whatever. So the, it's real. The security is real. Because the security is in the hearts and the minds of the, of the people. people. They, they don't, like, but they don't have to be the way that we were. Like, they don't have to be on alert at all times. That's how you have to be in the States. You got to be on alert. You got to have a whole security mindset. We're here. People are just being, the, just being alive. Like, we have another cultural thing is it's, we fight against it. We know that the, the, the girls or the women here are leaving. I want to say be careful. Be right. Right. Have a safe journey. Be and careful. Like, like, and they're like, be careful of what? What do you mean? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's hard because I'd be like, all right. And, and one of them went to the ATM. It was like 7 o'clock, pitch black. And I told another girl to go with her. And I turned around and she's still here. I said, you let her go by herself. <laughs> she said, Jada, it's okay. And I'm like, oh. but no, but okay. It's, that's a mindset that right. we're fighting against. Because we're afraid, we want to protect them, but from what? From, from what? They don't have that, they don't have those circumstances. <laughs> and, 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 and another very major, our children. See, in, in the States, you have to have a very watchful, close hand on your children. Especially shame, girls. Especially girls. Because you have the human trafficking and the sex trafficking. And the reality, the unfortunate reality is that I can turn right here this way and I can look, and in that split second, yeah. my child could be gone. They steal your children right I from you in the store. They'll I, snatch them. I can't send them out just to, just to be children, just to play at a playground, at a park, and just go and be free and play. So when we got here, there was a young girl across the street from us that our children was able to, hey, we want to go play. She knows where a park is. So our minds as parents is like, hey, let's meet their parents. Let them meet us, you know. And the little girl comes out, and she takes off and we're no parents. stalking them walking behind and then our them girls like, went right behind them and we're like but they can be children they can because be. every eye is the parent is the eye of a parent 
in Rwanda or even on the continent for that matter. So when we say in the States, it takes a village to raise a child, we for the first time were able to experience that, that this is a village of people and that they're gonna watch whether it's your child or not. We're gonna make sure these children, so we see little children, yay high, walking from school, yep. busy streets, no one Nobody's bothering them. Nobody's watching them, no parents, are, I'm like, oh Lord, where that baby mama at? And they're just walking, and they're, they're like, carefree, what? They you have no that at home. So it's amazing of the security factor. It's amazing. Is it affordable to live in Rwanda? Way more affordable than <laughs> the US. It's a lot of more affordable. Yeah. It it just depends on what type of life you want. Um if it was just me and my husband, we'd have a nice little small apartment in a city. Nothing. Very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. But we have six people here. We have both our moms. Um so we have retirement people here with us. And both our girls, 10 and 11. So it's we chose a different um, lifestyle, of course. But price-wise, the food cost, way low. Um, you don't have insurances and all that kind of stuff you got to worry about. Mm -hmm. Everything is pay cash up front. We're learning even the medical. Mm -hmm. In the States, they're charging you stuff just to have a, a go into a hospital just to be seen, my pinky hurt. That's gonna cost about $1,500, which here would be 15, um, that, 15, it? 15, francs. 15,000 francs. 15,000 francs. <laughs> which is, no, that's $15. 1,500. Yeah. Yeah. Blah, whatever. 1,500 It's crazy. Yeah, francs. This and then it. here, you go in, you're paying $5. Medicine, my mom had medicine, her copay, in the States was like $10 for this medicine. We needed to have it filled. She brought the medicine from here, she paid $10, buying it. Her copay in the States was more than that, and the insurance covered the rest. So it's, they don't, they're not taxing you here. It's just, you've just, it's, it's way affordable. It's way affordable. I have um, so many Africans in the diaspora who watch my videos, so I believe that both of you have um, a beautiful message for them. Um, if I should give you the platform to send a message to them, your final words to Africans living in the diaspora, what would that message be? For the Africans living in the diaspora, like African Americans or just Africans? I, I, see, I see African Americans, everybody, like, one family, uh, Jamaicans, in the okay. Caribbean, all of them. Are for me, I call them Africans. Africans. Yes, that's right. Me too. <laughs> so that is the message that I want. Yeah. Uh, my message would be get out. <laughs> get out. Man, they, they were lying to us. They lied to us. What are the color of the lies that you had? Africa is filled up with bugs. Um, they're hungry. They're starving. All the babies got pot bellies and flies in their eyes, and we're doing UNICEF trying to send money to them because they're starving over there. Um, even our, at that time, the president of the United States has said that Africa was the, what was it, the, the scum of the... He said something so, something, crazy. something of that line. And I'm like, really? Why would... Listen, I have never seen anything so beautiful. And we travel. We travel. We've been to beautiful places. Dominican Republic and Jamaica, Mexico. We've been to those beautiful places. But when you come to a place that is connected to your soul, mm. you're like, oh my God. Every morning, if I'm sad, I can go outside and be reminded of the blessing that God has given us. It's so beautiful. And we can't wait to explore and see more of it. We're country. trying to be like Wulamaya and see the <laughs> world. <laughs> We, gotta, we have to hit Ghana, we have to hit Nigeria, we yeah. have to hit Senegal. So, which is Rwanda is your first? Rwanda, no, we've been to Tanzania. Tanzania, oh, Tanzania. Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we've, been, uh, we've been to there. This is our second passport stamp here. But um, we fell in love. We fell in love. We were like, let's make this our base. And to be able to be somewhere where you're not looking over your shoulders, worrying about the colonizers. Mm -hmm. We've, we've had some traumatic experiences over there, man. We've got stopped by the police here. And me and my husband, like, all right, head straight, hands, everything straight. Ten and two. <laughs> Cops come and they fist bumping. Fist bumping us and, like, joking around with the driver. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay, okay. At home, that could have resulted in something different. You could have lost your life just because a cop stops you. 
this is real. We're not being dramatic. Because I only can tell you what I've been through. So, man, get out. <laughs> get out. Why we keep, like you said in that video, why do y'all keep staying there, dealing with that? Right. We've asked people here, do you know anyone that ever died, got shot? They're like, no. Ask any of them. None of them know anyone that ever got shot. Ain't no, they don't know anyone that's ever had a drug overdose, let alone been abused by a cop. They don't know any of that. That's not even a thing over here. It's normal life in the States. That's a part that's of normal. normal. That's just what we go through and we right. just deal with it. But like you said, why? So I, I would agree with that. You know, I, as Africans, we are original people. The whole entire earth belongs to the original people. There's nowhere on the face of this earth that you could go that you won't find us. We have a right. We have a global right. We have a human right to be able to go and live wherever we should desire. And the living is in here. So if you think that if you if you think that you leave from where you are, you're gonna miss out, you're not gonna miss out. Because the opportunities are vast and broad and wide all throughout the entire globe. The root of us exists right here on this continent. So why not come back? Why, even if you don't re relocate and reside here, come, visit, explore, Put that on the top of your bucket list or something to come to Africa, come to any continent, Rwanda and the other 53 countries on the <laughs> continent, whichever you should choose, mm -hmm. but come for and yourself. Don't, for yourself. Let that be your, your pilgrimage. Let that be your pilgrimage. So uh, it is something that would absolutely help in the human development of you as an individual, the spiritual development as you as an individual, the intellectual development, the cultural, every aspect that allows for us to exist, coming to reconnect, even if it's for a week, two weeks, or for the rest of your life, come to Africa. Ikawa means coffee. coffee. <laughs> yeah, coffee yeah. Yes. And um, I wanna say, Thank you so much for sharing your experience with me. Yeah, and thank you. This video will inspire many out there to also make that move that we are all looking for. Thank you so much for watching and uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe and be part of this awesome family. And I will say once again that they have an Airbnb. Whenever you come in here, make sure you book it. And a YouTube channel. A, a YouTube, you have a YouTube channel? Yes. <laughs> we do. We've been documenting our journey. Really? Do, do you mind if I say it? No. Of course, I didn't know. Please. It's the residential tours. I think I've seen it before. You, okay, I've seen that. Residential. Is it residential? The residential, residential tours. The residential tours. Yeah, yes. so please. Yeah, I'm going to put the link in the description. Make sure you subscribe. I think if I knew this, I wouldn't have even asked you so many questions. No worries. So that you'll be able to get most of the answers that they're looking for on your channel. Oh. No worries. Thank you no so worries. much. Thank We're so you. blessed that you even want to talk to us. No, come on. I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm just a messenger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. I am fire. Peace out.